Hello again, everybody, and thank you, Asian Society of Correctal Surgeons, again for the opportunity to present. And my topic is all about the diverticulitis management. And I have no disclosure. As we know that the uh, treatment strategy for the diverticulitis uh, keep changing over and over and back and forth. Um, uh, I think the main reason of that is we don't have the data that's strong enough to support each strategy. So that's why there are so many controversial issues that's still debatable. And in this talk, I'm going to go through some of the controversial issues like in um, uncomplicated diverticulitis. Let's say if the patient comes to see you with um, just my localized symptoms, uh, low grade fever, and the CT scan just show the uncomplicated uh, diverticulitis. Uh, do we need to give them the antibiotic or not? And in the patient who present with the diverticulitis with an abscess, um, what is the optimal treatment for the abscess? And additionally, uh, do we need uh, elective surgery after successful non-operative management? And lastly, I'm going to talk about the management of the patient who got uh, generalized peritonitis, especially in the hinge 3 uh, which is uh, uh, purent peritonitis. So in those patients, do we need the urgent colectomy or we can just do the laparoscopic lavage? And in the patient who need urgent colectomy, should we do Hartman or we can do the anastomotic with uh, ileostomy? I'm going to start with uh, uncomplicated diverticulitis. Do we need to give them the antibiotics? Even though the infection and microperforation have been thought as the etiology of the diverticulitis for decades, however, there's a new uh, theory believes that primary inflammation process is the etiology of the diverticulitis, which kind of same as the IBD. So the need of antibiotics for the uncomplicated diverticulitis is now debatable. I'm gonna discuss some of the RCT. Um, regarding this issue. The first one is the AWOT trial, which is the multi trial, uh, which include the patient who confirmed that by CT scan uh, that they have the hinge one a uh, uncomplicated diverticulitis, and then they divide the patient into two groups. The first group, uh, they give the patient antibiotics for more than seven days, and then um, the other groups, they just give the patient the IV fluid. And they found there's no difference in the time to recovery and no difference in complications and also no difference uh, in terms of the recurrent rate between the two groups. They also published another paper that reports their long-term outcome which has a uh, 95% success rate without any antibiotic. And next RCT, I can uh, uh, discuss about the Diabolo trial, which is also a multi central trial comparing the antibiotic versus non antibiotic uh, for the first episode of uncomplicated diverticulitis. And it is very interesting that uh, this trial also includes a patient who got Hinchi 1B uh, into the trial. And the outcome is uh, also the same as AVAT trial. Uh, which is no difference in the term of uh, time to recovery, uh, complications, uh, recurrence diverticulitis. Also, uh, there's no difference in sigmoid resection rate. And the next question for this issue is that, uh, do we need to admit the patient to the hospital? And the DIVO trial uh, comparing the patient who got the uncomplicated diverticulitis um, which admit to the hospital versus uh, treat as an outpatient. And there's no failure rate difference, and there's no patient that need emergency surgery, and there's no mortality. In conclusion for the uncomplicated diverticulitis management, um, from the data that I have shown, adding the antibiotic does not improve the outcome. So giving the antibiotic to the uncomplicated diverticulitis patients should be individualized and actually further studies should focus on the risk factors that may affect the outcomes if the patient didn't receive the antibiotics. For example, the CT scan or labs finding that may 
uh, cause a higher chance of failure uh, without antibiotics. And now I'm going to move to uh, the patients who have the diverticular abscess. What should we do uh, for the acute management for the abscess? Either uh, antibiotics or uh, drainage, or do we need to do the colon, uh, urgent colon resections? And after we success uh, the non-operative management, do that patient needs the elective colectomy? So that's the question. Unfortunately, there's no consensus uh, in this issue uh, due to there's no strong um, data available. Uh, currently, uh, especially most of the study has a selective bias. And here is a systematic review that includes 42 observational studies which focus on Hinchi 1B or 2 who were treated by antibiotic alone or a percutaneous drain or uh, emergency surgery. In the patient who got emergency surgery had increased risk of death compared to the non-operative treatment. 12% versus 1%. But the non-operative treatment has a failure rate around 20% and recurrence rate around 25%. However, when we look into the patient who had abscesses uh, less than 3 cm, the success rate of the treating by antibiotic alone is 100%. On the other hand, if the abscesses are larger than 4 cm, treating with just the antibiotics alone has a treatment failure uh, up to 34%. And using the percutaneous drainage can lower the uh, recurrence rate uh, from 22% down to 16%. So the conclusion of this study is to state that antibiotic alone uh, is associated with a very high treatment success rate for the abscess that less than 4 cm. And percutaneous drain should be considered in the large abscesses. However, the recurrence rate after uh, successfully management of the complicated diverticulitis with the abscess is still high in most of the study. And in this study, only 28% of the patients who had abscess can avoid the surgery uh, without recurrence. And this is another study that shows up to 60% of the patient. Uh, who got uh, non-operative management for the abscess had recurrent disease in five months. So that's why most of the studies support that a patient should uh, receive surgery after successfully non-operative management for the abscess. However, if we look into the detail of all of this study, like this study uh, show 40% of the patient has no recurrence at all. And actually, the question that needs to be answered in real-life situation is that if this group of patients who are perfectly fine come to see you in the clinic, and do you need to convince them to get an elective colectomy done? Moreover, as shown in this study, even though there is a high rate of frequency after successfully management for the diverticulitis with abscess, the need of emergency colectomy is very low. So the conclusion for the diverticular abscess management, and actually we, we have to accept that currently there's no good data. Uh, most of the study have uh, selective bias. And as we know, uh, in very sick patients, they obviously need the emergency surgery. And in some patients, they uh, uh, respond well to just antibiotics. And however, the rest of the patients, uh, PCD, seem to have very good outcomes. And finally, in the patient who responds well to the non-operative management, do they need elective surgery or just observations? In my opinion, it is very important to discuss with them individually. The next issue is going to be uh, the patient who has perforated diverticulitis. So uh, in my talk, I'm going to focus on Hinchi 3, uh, which is a prurient uh, polytonitis. I will not uh, discuss on Hinchi 4, uh, which is a fecal polytonitis. As you know, the Hartman procedure is a uh, standard of care for this scenario. However, it still has high morbidity and high mortality. And moreover, half of the patients who got uh, Hartman procedures never got the Hartman reversal. 
So currently, the trend is to avoid the Hartman either by laparoscopic lavage or by resection anastomosis and uh, diverting loop ileostomy. So I'm going to go through the, the study regarding the lap lavage first. Um, there's three RCT, uh, including the Lila, uh, Ladies Lola, and Scandiff trial. Uh, all of these trials, uh, they include the patient who had uh, immunocompetent, uh, hemodynamic stable, uh, without any uh, severe comorbidity, and without over uh, perforation site. And the first one is the LADY trials, uh, which is the multicenter trial comparing the laparoscopic lavage uh, versus sigmoidectomy in the prurient uh, peritonitis. Unfortunately, the, the trial was prematurely terminated due to the safety concerns in the lavage arms, which have um, higher complication rate and higher reinvent uh, intervention rate around twofold uh, when compared to the sigmoidectomy arm which may be because of the unresected colon that um, cause ongoing septic complications. And next trial is Scandiff trial, uh, which have the same uh, research question as the ladies trial. Uh, compare the laparoscopic lavage versus the primary colon resections. And the results show that the lab lavage uh, did not reduce the severe complication and also have a higher mortality and also have a significant higher uh, reoperation rate. And it's very important to know that in the lap lavage uh, group, there's uh, intra-abdominal abscess is uh, twice as high as uh, uh, when compared to the resection group. And also, uh, the lap lavage uh, has more secondary peritonitis, uh, around 12%, uh, versus uh, 0% in the resection group. And those are the reasons that's why uh, the lab lavage group has more reoperation rate when compared to the resection group. However, the rate of the stoma formations in lab lavage group is less than in uh, resection group. So the conclusion of using lab lavage is that uh, lab lavage is feasible for just uh, highly selective patients. The problem that we need to concern is on ongoing uh, septic complications after lab lavage. And here is another option to be do primary anastomosis with the diverting loop ileotomy instead of the uh, Hartman procedures. And here is the divert trial. It's a multicenter trial uh, uh, from 2008 to 2012. So compare the primary anastomosis with the Hartman procedures. And they include all the patients who had the purent uh, peritonitis and also the fecal peritonitis. The results show no difference in the uh, term of morbidity and mortality. And however, uh, the stoma reversal rate um, significant higher in the primary anastomotic arm. I think in the other way that we can uh, say that if you have ileostomy, it's going to be easier to do the ileostomy closure than the uh, Hartman reversal. In conclusion, for the uncomplicated diverticulitis, Non-antibiotic is feasible and safe in selected patients. And for the diverticular abscess, PCD has a good outcomes in the large abscesses. And the elective colon resection after non-operative management should be individualized. And lastly, for the patient who got prurient peritonitis, lap lavage now is not a standard uh, treatment. Uh, during an anastomosis with the diverting loop ileostomy, has higher stoma reversal rate when compared to the Hartman procedures. Thank you for watching.